Unexpected, mysterious, but not to be denied. Join me now and take one step beyond. These columns, centuries old, are almost as ancient as Mexico City itself. Our search for the true story of a ghost has brought us here to the great capital of Mexico. And this historic monastery, now a school. What's more, there is a man yet alive who lived a century in one night within these very walls. You will meet him as soon as you have seen his terrifying experience. all night. Don't you say such a thing. Anda, go, go help your, your abuelo. Anda, anda, listo, listo, niño. Take a little tequila, it will give you strength. <laughs> I fainted, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Jorge frightened you even more than you frightened him. Where am I now? In El Convento. Uh, let's go. No, 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 senor, no, no, no. A hospital is what you need. No. Oh, yeah. Maria, Please. go for the authorities. No! Right. But, but you should be taken care of, senor. Por favor. Just give me a moment, and I'll be able to leave on my own. I'm afraid. Calla, calla. Take the child and go. Y, y tú? I will join you at Emilio's muy pronto. No, I won't go without you. He should be in a hospital. But he does not want a hospital. If you'll give me just a few moments rest. Abuelita, tengo miedo. Afraid? Of me, niño? No, 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 senor, not of you, no. Take the child to the wagon and wait for me. Oh. Va, va. Not too long, eh, Carlos? No, 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 not too long. Yeah, vamos, vamos. If not me, who is the child afraid of? I'll go find some food for you in the kitchen. Carlos, it's eight o'clock. We tried to get up and almost fainted again. Shouldn't we call the authority? Yes. You are about to become a very popular man, senor. For what reason, amigo? You will get your name in all the newspapers. You will make a lot of pesos. Why? I am Dr. Pino Atl. Who? <laughs> Such is fame, eh? I'm sorry, senor, but we, we live a simple life here. I was very close. To the president. The one, the one they killed? The one they killed. But to have been a friend of his, is that a crime? A new government believes I was too much a friend. They put me in prison. I escaped <laughs> for a while. Ay, Carlos. Vamos, vamos de aquí. Maria, the gentleman is going to spend the night here. Okay. He will stay with him. Pero estás loco, Carlos. Tú estás loco. He's going to be all right. No, it, it's dark already. Look, go to Emilio's. You don't think I believe in those stupid stories? Oh, but, but can't he go to the hospital? Oh, senor. 
I plead with you. See, my husband, he is not well. You see his arm? He had paralysis. Oh, please, senor. He cannot stay in this place tonight. But why? Do not ask her why. She will fill your head with foolishness. Ay, why are women such superstitious fools? She will tell you that the convent is haunted, that this is the night that the ghost wanders around. The ghost? Yes, everybody will tell you this is so... All women will tell you! Oh. Now, go, go, go and take the child with you. Oh. I order this. But she actually believes it. She was terrified. A ghost? Oh, my. My. And coming back right on schedule. Like in all the terrifying children's stories, eh? No, senor. It's not a children's story. Senor. This is not the result of a children's story. How, how did this get here? At this time, last year, a soldier was quartered here. He was alone in here. He screamed, we came. He said a terrific force had pushed him up against the wall. Then we found this. It must be some trick. But who would play such a trick? But this is the hand of a giant. Yes. You do not believe this. I don't know. I'm not sure. This was once an Aztec shrine. Two days a year, terrible grave days in their calendar. Slaves were put to death here. It is said this is one such day. <laughs> an old man can be as silly as an old woman, eh, senor? But you think this is all foolishness. Yet everyone in this neighborhood believes in this ghost, this, this specter. It is said that he was an Indian warrior whom the Aztec king sacrificed in the fullness of his youth and power. It is said that he was seven feet tall. If that is his hand, then he must have been. See? You, you are amused at me, eh, senor? I'm afraid I was born a skeptic, mi buen amigo. Hey, look about us, my dear benefactor. Huh? It is time now for his appearance. But where is he? This Aztec giant who chants and thrusts his hands against walls. Where is he? A man from uh, the market outside the convento came to the prison. He said, there is a man lurking about suspiciously, hiding. Somehow, he looks like the pictures of this Dr. Otto. I saw the papers. Oh. The man must have been blind. <laughs> How could this be my late prisoner? How could this be Dr. Otto? Dr. Otto is a man of magnificent appearance. His face is always clean-shaven. He is a great artist, a profound philosopher, a confidante of presidents. Poor stinking wretch. How can you be Dr. Otto? Oh. 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 It hurts. 
My head has been hurting for five days. Who helped you escape? No one. We shall see about no one. Out that gate and into the car of the curb. What, what are you going to do with him? Feed him to the pigeons in the square. Why? Who are you? He is only the porter here. He did not know who I was. Let him talk for himself. Did you, did you feel that? A cold wind. A cold wind on a, on a windless night. Sit down. Sit down, doctor. Dr. Ron, you are an exceedingly intelligent man. But there comes a time when even an intelligent man has to cease being ridiculous. Water regains consciousness, he will tell you. That a ghost killed Captain Alvarez. I did not say a ghost. You said it. I said he was killed by someone or something unseen. I have said this 10,000 times since they have brought me here. You're a man whose luck has really run down. The new regime would not have treated you so badly. You have good friends with the new Presidente. Even now they point out that you were merely trying to bring peace between the factions. So I was. But when you kill a public official, that is a different matter. I did not kill him. The porter will tell you. The porter will not tell you. He cannot. He died ten minutes ago. So, Dr. Otto. He would have told you the truth. Huh. How safe you are in saying that now. I did not kill him. How strong you become when you get angry. Huh. Would you like to hear the surgeon's report? Fracture of left mandible, fracture of maxilla, fracture of temporal bones, gross abrasions on left side of neck, multiple fractures of clavicle. <laughs> How could I have done that? Eh? Captain lies dead in the basement morgue. Have you seen the body? Isn't the report enough? It's too much. That's the point. If you will go and see the body, you will see that I could not have done it. Will you see the body with me? Yes. Will you? Vamos. Captain Alvarez's widow claimed the body early this morning. 
Where was it taken? Apparently, the captain was not a religious man. Still, the body could not have been buried so quickly. No, he was not buried. Where can we see the body? Well, you cannot. The captain was cremated about four hours ago. Quite correct, sir. My luck has run down. Perhaps not. Something. I must admit, Dr. Atul, I was deeply impressed. I was angry before because I... I thought it was another fraud. You know, uh, an insult to my intelligence. Now I think that you actually believe the story. I do. Isn't the mind absolutely remarkable? And yet, it is so understandable. A man like you would find violence utterly repugnant. Naturally, your hold uh, your whole personality would reject it. The porter and the other obviously told you about this specter, this phantom, hmm? Did you not find it utterly ridiculous at the time? At the time? Ah. But it was planted in your mind. And look how your mind has used it. Or well, you have managed to absolutely blot out the whole truth with this fable. Of course. Of course, Doctor. You killed Captain Alvarez. No. No. Oh, come, come now, Doctor. Surely you do not believe in phantoms any more than I do. But I saw something. Of course you did. Of course you saw something. Your mind created uh, something to shield you from this act of violence, which is so against your nature. You have heard of such things. But this was different. Every time it happens, the person always says, yes, but this was different. Come, come now, my friend. It is not so bad. I'm sure our office would consider a plea of temporary derangement. Frankly speaking, this Captain Alvarez was somewhat of a sadist. But a man of your stature, your intellect, would be treated gently. Hmm? My head is buzzing. What are you doing? Gomez wants to borrow it, just for an hour. And since I'm about to go off duty anyhow... Gomez... Senora Alvarez is paying him 300 pesos, so he wants it to be perfect. And how much is the vulture paying you? Nothing, sir. I assure you... You assure me? Get up, go on. 300 pesos. <laughs> the vulture. Well, now, Dr. Otto, let us seriously consider how it must have happened. I did not do it. I cannot make myself believe something that is not true. But it is true. No, I did not touch him. You didn't touch him. We will go to Gomez. Come, Dr. Otto. Come, you poor innocent man. You grand intellectual. Come! Gomez, I brought this gentleman along to show him what you are doing for Captain Alvarez's widow. But it's not ready. There's much work yet to be done. Show us what you have. But, Colonel, it's impossible. Muy bien. You are barred from entering any public building under my authority or dealing with any of my men. 
No, 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 por favor. Show us what you have. I suppose it must be dry by now. Though I would like to wait a few more minutes. Now, now. Gomez is also a very fine artist, Dr. Atto. He does very well making death masks for uh, grieving orphans and widows. <laughs> You see why I needed the photograph? Why I didn't want you to see it just yet? That's the trouble with working with plaster of Paris. It picks up everything, even hair. But of course, with the dead, it's more difficult. The flesh does not spring back into place. Look what the murdered hand did. Did you ever see such marks? But I assure you, it will be first rate when I deliver it to the senora. What fingers this brute must have had. Look here. And here. This, this strangler, Coronel Ferrero. What kind of a creature was he? He must have been a giant. What kind of a creature was he? Well, all we can say is that the man who was there when all this happened, 40 years ago, is here with us now. We are indeed honored by the presence of perhaps one of Mexico's most distinguished living artists, philosophers, and critic, Dr. Adel. Doctor. For the purposes of uh, dramatization and condensation, you allowed us certain liberties with your incredible story. But the psychic occurrence, that happened exactly as reenacted. Isn't that so? Yes. In 1920, in the courtyard of El Convento de la Merced. El Convento de la Merced is the convent that we photographed in the first part of the picture. I saw an officer, a stranger to death, by someone or something not visible to the eye. The, the officer was strangled by someone or something not to be seen by the eye. It's an incredible story, Doctor. And you were saved from a murder charge by the use of a plaster of Paris cast, similar to this one, taken of the dead man. No? That's correct. For the march, on the throat could only have been made by a giant. And probably I am far from that. Doctor, show me exactly how you put your hand on the throat to defend yourself. My words are incredible. How small your hand is compared to this hand of the giant, huh? Dr. Adel, how close were you to whatever happened? As close I am to you, and I see you Quite clearly. Thank you, Doctor. Right. Explain it? We cannot. All we can say is that it happened. And to that man. Why was El Convento de la Merced haunted by that specter? Could it be that among all those millions sacrificed savagely throughout bloody history, Something remains here on Earth. A troubled shadow to remind the living that injustice has been done. I wonder. 